Okay, I think we will open the meeting at 6.30, 3.34. Um, open the meeting with roll call. Larry? Here. Don? Here. Isla? Yes. And Arlene? Yes. So with everyone present, we will draw attention to the Open Meeting Act, post it, and say goodbye. Stand and join. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, in your packet, um, Council, you have the, um, uh, the minutes for the May 18th meeting. Uh, it's short. Uh, if you've had a chance to read that, we can approve those. The May 4th meeting is incomplete at this time, so we'll do that later. Um, so I have to entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the May 18th. I'll make a motion that we approve the May 18th meeting. Okay, motion by Isla. Second. Second by Arlene. We'll go, we'll go Don. Yes. Mary? Yes. Arlene? Yes. And I? Yes. Um, at this time, we'll open that special hearing um, to hear about the uh, financial report from Bob Evans. You want this, Bob? I think we probably need it. Can everyone hear me? Thank you. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank everybody for coming here tonight. I appreciate the opportunity to come here and represent the select group of people known as the Oversight Committee. Um, I, they've chosen me to be their president. Uh, okay, so that's fantastic. I appreciate the opportunity to do that. With that being said, uh, this being a hearing, is I have some things that obviously that uh, I would like the public to hear. Uh, first and foremost, I would say that I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm naive in the basic premise of the law, is that the, the federal government obviously has some laws and rules and regulations, but then of course obviously the states are given the ability to, to have their own as long as they fall underneath the basic guidelines of the federal government. And then we, the taxpaying citizens, crop and then have the right as a community, city, whatever we're called, <laughs> to to do what we think is in the best interest of the Crofton community, knowing that it still falls in the hospice of the state, still falls in the hospice of the, the federal government. With that being said, um, a while back, the taxpaying citizens of Crofton came up with the economic development plan and uh, had four um, areas in which they wanted to fund. Um, it's the creation and retention of jobs, attraction of new capital investment for the community, broaden our tax base, and provide economic diversification to ensure economic stability and the vitality of the city of Crofton. And so that's what locally we decided that our LV840 20% of the 1% should be used for. And uh, in reading and in doing the research that I have, and of course representing the other members of the OSI committee, we've also, we noted that some of those expenditures do not fall into those four categories which our taxpaying citizens uh, voted in. I do know that of course, obviously, um, our LBA 40 did meet the uh, criteria to become LV840, otherwise it never would have passed. And I do know that we have those four specific things 
that we want to do as a city. So with that being said, um, the 20% of the 1% uh, needs to then be allocated through the Economic Development Board. And so any expenditures that are made of that tax money should have been or should be approved by that board. Those things I know for sure. Um, there have been some questions or concerns or, or comments about the budget of all this and how it all works and uh, the budgetary constraints. But for those of you who have looked at, took the time and effort to, and have noted that in our Crofton's LB840 Economic Development Plan, there was a budget. In the end, there are $25,000 worth for property acquisition and $75,000 for infrastructure improvements and $80,000 for business loans and grants and $15,000 for recruitment and marketing. And I know that that's all subject to change and that was an estimate. But if you added those numbers together when I was rambling on, <laughs> it adds up to about $200,000. The financial statement that I've looked at, that we've viewed, has a, a, a budget now of, of currently we're standing of around $10,000. And so over, and I guess this being my third time up here, and talking about this process, I was initially like, okay, let's just make this right and let's move forward. Let's just go on with it. Get, put the passion behind and then let's just go and make it right. But now my third time being here and this not being the case and this being my responsibility, I guess I'm not at that point anymore. I'm at the point where over the course of the 15 years, $200,000 or more was supposed to be collected and invested in um, economic development. And as an oversight president, that's where I'm at. And we have a current withstanding balance of around $10,000. So I'm letting the public hear what I've seen and taking note. What was that total you gave us on that original budget, Bob? That was how many hundred thousand? Two hundred thousand. Yeah, one hundred ninety-five thousand. One hundred ninety-five thousand. That was the initial. It wasn't adjusted. Yeah, I think that was a was that an example? I a, a, as an example budget, but it didn't really break it down further than into those categories. Correct. Okay. And it was a four instance, yeah, okay. Well, I did a quick, I did a quick math too, that if you happen to bring in 70,000 a year for, what was it, 20 years? 15. Okay, 20% of 70,000 is 14,000 a year, for 15 years is 210,000. So you'd be a little bit over your 195 projected or whatever. So, yeah, I, I have no comment. I mean, I you said, like you said, on your first time up, you said, let's move forward. Um, I don't know what you want done. Do you want to go back to 15 years worth of books and see if you can find that money? I'm just going to give oversight to say that it's not right. Do I want to go back and do that? Yeah. No, it means it doesn't need to be made right. Yes. We have no way of knowing what it was spent for. That's why the first two times I'm saying let's fix it and go on and it hasn't been fixed. I'm not ready to move on now. Okay. Donna? Yes, um, we came in November. The oversight committee came in in November before the year end, fiscal year end. 
with the hopes that the fiscal year end would start with the correct balance in our account? If you came in in November, you were after the fiscal year end. Please? If you came in in November, yes. you were after the end of the fiscal year. The fiscal year ended right. in September. And we brought it to the board's attention yes. that wages had been deducted from our yep. account. Yep. And we were assured that that correction would be taken no, care of. No, we weren't assured. We, we were told that that was legal. We were going to look into it and take care of it. Yes. Let me finish, please, Cheryl. Okay. That was our understanding. Because I got up here and said, verbatim, yes, we're going to look at this and take care of it. At the year end, you have 80-some adjustments made. I came to that meeting, too. And the adjustments were presented to the board. I don't think they had much time to read those adjustments. No, you don't. But they made a motion to approve the adjustments so they could close out the fiscal year. One of the line items in those adjustments took 4000 out of our Economic Development Committee funds. Exactly what we were trying to avoid in November. Then we look at this, and the debate was, yes, you can use wages for Office of Economic Development. Bob said, we got four buckets according to our plan that we had to have in place before the ballot could be voted. We didn't have to do everything the state had to get on guidelines. We elected to isolate these four buckets that we wanted to spend Office of Economic money for. Okay? Wages was in the guidelines. Our plan elected not to conclude that. So that's the history. At some point, wages had been taken out, and nobody challenged it. And so it just sat there and was left to go. That's back the 10 years. In November, we came. We didn't want to go back and get our monies. We wanted fiscal year to end with the proper amount in the budget and proceed forward. Now, the plan says you have an Office of Economic Development Board and you have an Oversight Committee. The board, these are restricted funds that come from the sales tax. Yeah, move forward. Please. The board is the only one that can spend this money. Anybody has an idea for economic development, give the idea to the board. The board makes up a plan figures out how much it's going to cost. They are supposed to submit it to the, to the city council and the mayor, and they can say yes or no. It should be a relatively easy job for the oversight committee. We should be able to look at the money that came in from the sales tax and the plans that how it was spent. But it hasn't been. Okay. We're on the same team. I just can't understand it. That is the only fund that the city council cannot control. Excuse me. Yes, the council, I believe, does control it. You just said yourself that they have to They can me. say yes or no to a plan that originates from the Office of Economic Development Committee. OK. OK? I. I Fine, we've been through this a hundred times, okay? So we're, I'm, I'm not going to spend the time tonight because here's the deal. This is the public Because plan. here's the deal. I understand that you came in here. I asked Bob what if there was something that we need to get out, and he said no, it's the same thing. Then he comes and tells me he's changed his mind. If you look at this recruitment and marketing, Recruitment and marketing could be led by an economic development director who deserves to be paid. And the state law says that you can use those funds to do so. I'm fine if we can find funds elsewhere to pay that economic development director, or we can get rid of it if you people on that the committee want to run it. But you cannot go out and make your decisions and come in here to surprise us with all of your information. Nobody is working with this council and mayor. 
Excuse you me. are doing your things by yourself as I see it. Now, you have, I still say that the original budget, Bob, that you were talking about, I looked at that sheet several times and it says, for example, here's an example. I never saw that Crofton had got that, but if they did, that's fine. My point being this. The adjustments that you saw were done in, an, in at the end of the year, and oftentimes those are misread. And I'll go back and look at that four thousand um, dollars, and we'll find out where it came from. But at the end, those adjustments, most of them are because of the difference between cash accounting and accrual accounting. Um, the, at the end of the fiscal year. Those accounts are closed out into zero and moved into equity accounts. That 4000 may still be there that you're looking at. Okay, where is it? Okay. Where is it? It's in the general fund. It's in the general fund. No, there was no economic development moved into the general fund. That's what the adjusting entry is. That's what the adjusting entry is. There, there was money out of the general economic development moved into the other one, but not the other way around. Well, it's not in the lost account, and that's our sales tax account. All we want is to, you to put back the $4,560.05. We'll call it good. We're not going to go back 15 years and try to redo all that. And we want from now on, before any wages come out, we, we are not going to do wages. So all we're asking, what... And, the, and what is right is right. $4,500 what? $4,560.05. And that is per the adjusting entries that were made at the year end. Okay, I will look at that specifically. I am not going to take meeting after meeting on this, but somebody can walk into that office and sit down and then... And basically go over this with me instead of coming to a meeting and saying, oh, here's a surprise, we're going to have this now. We gave you a budget for tonight, Cheryl, and you're still not working with us. We're trying to. It says right in here... But the budget doesn't talk anything about that $4,605.06, does it? If we, we put it back in there because it belongs back in that lost... Okay. Uh, the budget that you have, what you have is an estimated income that it should be. If you're going to have a true budget, when I did the budget, I put down what we're going to spend for the next year. This has nothing about spending except recruitment and marketing 75% and carryover. It has nothing about we're going to have a, a new building, we're going to have, we're, we're going to, what, what, what is recruitment because and marketing? Because we don't know right at this Well, point. then I don't know what's in my budget either. I don't know if we're going to have gas in the pickups or not. That's the beauty of this Office of Economic for the Office of Economic Development Committee. Our budget is the 20% of the 1% sales tax. You have nothing to worry about how that money is spent. The Budget Office of the Economic Committee has to be responsible in spending that. You don't have to worry anything about it. You just know that there's 14,000 coming in to the office out of that sales tax and it's going straight to that account. It's not your responsibility as a board to see how that's spent. The oversight committee has the responsibility of making sure that the office, be, or the, yeah, the economic committee spends it properly. Then it may become a board problem. But that an area that you don't have to worry about. You've got enough problems. And I, the other thing I wanted to say, I take offense that you say we're not working with the council anymore. I've not heard from anybody. Got, Nobody has made got one vote call. Committee. Pardon me? Listen, I was here at a meeting with the zoning committee. The committee had met. They recommended that you pass the zoning permit change for the hotel. And? It, you had everything against it. You refused to accept their information and approve the permit. 
I didn't refuse to accept it. it I took just listened how and I many disagree. Months? Do I have a right to disagree? You, yes, but it shouldn't have been a board decision. Yes. Yes, it is. It should have been, hey, we've got you guys working Excuse on Excuse me, you it is to a board. Ma'am, nothing in this city gets done without council approval. Sorry. You should have. Mr. McNally, am I correct? You should have taken your advice. It took three more months before that hotel got an understanding. That had nothing to do with it. They were having public meetings and they followed the, I didn't stop anything. What are you talking about? That's the you hear that. I'm Don't look at me then. I accept the remark saying that the city public is not working with the board and mayor. That's right. They sure aren't. How do you think they got five members on the Office of Economic Donna, Development? Donna, would you please... Would you, you please, please discontinue this? Fine. Would you please discontinue But I think you owe us an apology. No, I don't. I think that we need to decide tonight what we're going to do with the money. If the board, the board agrees to put that $4,500 back in the lost account, then we can put this thing to bed and move forward. Otherwise, we're going to be back here in another couple months, and we won't know what money we have. We don't know what money you're going to decide to take out of there at the year end. Because we weren't made aware of it until these adjustments came out to the public. So let's just move on. Let's let's make a motion to put that back into the lost account and be done with it. Well, you know what, Irma, you're a, you are a very smart lady. And if you would have walked into the office and said, let's go through the computer and see why Eddie decided to put that over, I'd have been happy to sit down with you and do that. Let's not go that way, okay? I'm okay. not going to get into that. But I'm just saying but, tonight we got to give and take, and we're willing but, to give up the four or five years, so. And, what's, and I'm sorry, but that's exactly where it could be. I didn't put that over there. We hired an accountant who said this needs to go over there, and the auditors wanted it over there. Those adjustments were all made per auditors. And that was said not you were a decision. Call and talk to them about it. Pardon you, me. You said that you were going to call and talk to, to them about that. I you did. Know? And they said they couldn't reverse it. They said that that was money that was in the general fund under economic development, and it went. I think that it's, I still think it went into the other one, so I'll, I'll if check. If you look on the balance sheet. I will, but I'm not going to do it now because I'm not prepared because nobody told me you were going to do this. Oh, we told you two months ago. <laughs> Irma, tonight nobody told me you're going to bring this up for us to, to talk about. You can't do this. That is the point of a public meeting of our... I asked you, Bob, what exactly you said. What we've talked about before, and there's yeah, nothing there's changed. Nothing new. I, 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 but I you didn't say I'm going to. We're going to come in and say we want this done now. We wanted it done in November when it was before. And you asked me like I did something different or something wrong. Yes, you there's, said there's you did. Nothing that I haven't talked about tonight. That yeah, but you. All I'm saying is, is all I'm saying is, if you're going to come in here and demand something then you should let the council and the mayor know what you want. I'm not demanding anything. I'm informing the people what's Well, going I've on. got two ladies that are demanding. Hearing, and I'm public hearing what they So, are you demanding that the 4500 go back, Bob? You're the head of the oversight. I do, all I do is look at the papers and say it's not there. I'm not demanding anything. My job and my responsibility is to say that this is not right. I can't demand anything of you. That's not my job. Okay. That's not my responsibility. I say this, this is what was supposed to be there. The four things that are supposed to be spent on. This is how much money is supposed to be there. I can look at a piece of paper and see that that's not right. That's my job. That's my responsibility. I'm doing my job. If okay. you look on the current balance sheet that you all have in front of you, on account number 3350 is the lost fund. Economic development has only got $10,198 in it. And the park says $14,758. We should have exactly what the parks have. Nothing was taken out of the park money last year. Yeah. But we had $4,000. And if you take the difference between those two, that's what we want to put back into our lost account. Well, some of that, as we are, it was with wages, there's no doubt about it, probably. Probably all of them. 
So can we just? I'm not. Go I'm not going to just do it without going back and look at it. Make sure what it is. And this is. Um, um, A point of order, Cheryl. I think it took a motion from the board to approve those adjustments. It is going to have to be an emotion of the board to put it back, I'm guessing. Absolutely. Well, Mary, I have to say, this is going to go on and on and on about this stuff. They're right. They are right. I remember when this thing was... I'm not there. saying they're wrong, all right? Yes, but we're not going to do this. Just listen, listen to me, will you please? This is argument going on. It's going to last for how long? It's just going to keep festering and festering. This town is not getting any better. $4,560 is not a lot of money to put back. They'll call it square one, and we can go about our business. Okay, Larry, let me just say this. I'm going to say this one more time, and then we're moving on. And I'm not calling for a vote tonight until I look I at that paperwork. Can you motion. can make a motion if you want to, but I would hope that you would have the decency to take a look at those pa that paperwork and see if we can find out exactly why it went in there, and and approach the public because they have a right to know of exactly what it was. And the next time you want something done, you tell me ahead of time so we can come in prepared. This is about three or four meetings in a row that somebody's brought something up to. Cheryl, this is a surprise. Is not gonna make if you want to make a motion, make a motion. I'll make a motion that we put $4,560.05 back in economic development. You don't even know it came out there, so go ahead. I made a motion. Yes, it did. It's in this paper right here. I'll second it. I have a motion from Larry and a second from Don to put $4,560.05 out of what account? General. Because that's where you put it. I didn't. Out of the general account. Is that what you want, Larry? It's your motion. Yes. Out of the general account back in the economic development fund. Lost fund. Lost fund, excuse me. Do you know why that's a lost fund? Does anybody know why that's a lost fund? Sales tax account. Do you know why it's designated that way? So we can keep track of the money. Because I insisted that we put it that way. That's right. Otherwise, you wouldn't even know it was there. So don't tell me that I haven't been working on this. I did not say All right. We have a motion and a second. I will start the bidding, or the, the bidding, yes. Bid for the money, Larry. Yes. Arlene. I'm going to say nay because I think we need to check with the auditors and the legal. I think we need to do more checking also. Mm -hmm. And Don. Yes. So we have a tie. Guess where I stand. I vote no. I am with Arlene. We will. I what I told you earlier. We will talk with Eddie. We will talk with the auditors. We'll find exactly where it came from, and I will make an accounting to you. Can you tell us when this will happen, so we know where our budget's going to be? Because our budget doesn't mean anything. Kind of depends on when we can get through to the auditors and to, and to Eddie, but you know. We I'm can. not even talk to the auditors. What are you talking about? You said you talked to the auditors. I talked to the auditors every once in a while. No, about this $4,500, because you said you were going to. So I don't know what talking to them now is going to make any difference, but. Cheryl, the bottom, the bottom line is the account for parks and recreation and for the Office of Economic should be identical amounts in both accounts because no money should have been spent in either one. That's what has to be reconciled. Then I think that 
if that's the way that you prefer that that be done, then I think that probably we need to write up a um, resolution of how that money is going to be handled because the state says it can be used for wages. It was used for wages for Linda. It was raised for, used for wages for Charlie. It was used for wages for um, Kalena. And right now it is not being used for wages. So if you, I will follow that back through. We already have it in resolution 279 with the city how that money is to be Read the resolution. 279. Is that read the resolution? It's five pages long. <laughs> okay. Three, sorry. Dated 4th of August 2008. Can't you do just that part about the wages? No, okay. it's how we spend our okay. money. Okay. It does not say you can't use it for wages, though, does it? It says for Does it say you cannot use it for wages? Wages is one of the parts. If you put wages on any one of those things, especially the recruitment and marketing, that's where wages come in. But they aren't listed. Okay. But the, but the state says you can spend it that way, so. You can spend it any number of ways, but we chose not to. Okay, but what I'm saying is that nowhere in that resolution does it say you cannot use it for wages, and it has been done since the beginning of this program. In error. <laughs> well, not in error, according to state statute. I can't hear you, sir. If it wasn't done in error, it was done according to state statute. They were guidelines, sir. They were not. No, that's state statute. Are you, are you saying that your guidelines trump state statute? I'm saying we can follow the guidelines, but we do not violate the guidelines. We chose to isolate four parts, four areas. We listed them, we named them, we chose to ignore the rest of the guidelines. <coughs> So and you are passed muster because it could have gotten on the ballot if it hadn't. Let me ask you a question, Donna. Okay. How do you recruit business? How do you recruit business? How do you recruit business and how do you market things? That is what the, the economic development committee is supposed to do. Exactly, exactly though, give me a, a give me a for instance. How okay. do you do this? Now, how do you recruit businesses? Well, uh, how I did it, I, a particular one, I sent letters out to the target a whole bunch of people, and I got some phone calls back on it. You make contact, you know somebody that knows somebody, that's how it's done. And isn't that the involvement of a person that's out there recruiting and marketing, and they deserve wages? So recruitment and marketing is part of the wages. Well, but that's exactly what we wanted the economic development person to do, too. It's what Linda Webbin did. It's what Kalina did. They went to meetings. Were, were, were we not just discussing moving on and starting fresh? What happened in the past does not need to go any further. Mr. Swatsky, thank you. You're welcome. But I believe if you go, I don't know it. Okay, if you, I think if you go back to that same piece of paper that you're talking about, it says that the economic development comes to the, the city council with a proposal, a proposed budget. 
of how they're going to spend the money and then go back and get on. I mean, I don't know the details, haven't looked at it for a long time. But uh, there's nothing to approve on this because it's a list of money that comes in, so we're moving on. Um, the financial statements, there's not a whole lot to, to look at because uh, we've already looked at the, the balance sheet and so forth. There's a pro I, there is some things that I would like to point out. Um, and then we'll move right on because there's a I lot got, to I cover. I got a question on In, yes. the water repairs. Yes. How many did we do for that amount of money? Um, you'll have to wait until I find that sheet. All right. Okay. So what sheet are you on? Point of order. What? Is the public meeting for the Office of Economic Development closed? Yes, yes. Well, close that meeting. Thank you. Larry, what sheet are you on? I'm on the claims. Okay. Well, I was on the budget, or I was on the financials. Okay, so what are you looking at? Well, we got $3,705 for water repairs. How many did we repair? Is that just one repair? Is it 10 repairs? I don't know. Uh, oh, for Tim Garns construction? Tim Garns construction. The, 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 your, your invoices are in here for you to go through. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't look at them. Yeah. Um, there's several big ones, yes. There was the big water break up at Great Plains, and there was a... Um, well, that one by Great Plains, is that the city responsibility, or was that the person that done the big... Uh, it's on the city's bill, and the, and the, the other has been billed. They're going to reimburse us for that because they did call. I mean, yes, yes. That's what I'm asking. Yep. Um, and then, let's go. Let's go to the financial statements. Oh. Okay. The first thing on the financial statements is your reconciliation summary. Um, I guess we didn't put these in any kind of order particularly. I do want to draw your attention to the profit loss by fund, if you have that in front of you. And it does show the lost accounts. It shows um, from October to April, and that's just this fiscal year. And if you look closely at that, the economic development and the parks and recreation are exactly the same, which is what I've been trying to tell you. So the, the um, whether the um, um, total amount of income that comes in this year is good or bad, we won't know because we don't know what's going to happen. Um, obviously, there's going to be some hit taken probably on some of the local businesses. It's going to affect sales tax. So that's where we are as of in April. Uh, the balance sheet. Um, I don't have a whole lot there. If you've got some questions, um, run through. There's all your bank accounts. The accounts receivable, of course, are always big because um, we usually um, print these out at about the, at the time not all the bills or, or all the water bills are paid. So that's what is over the city. Um, I need you to look at the other other current asset there on twelve ninety. Um, that shows in the hole, and that's because that's in the wrong fund. So I noticed that tonight, but that, that actually belongs in the CBDG. So it was just put in the wrong fund. Um, the uh, cash on hand, all of that's pretty self-explanatory, and then you've got your, um, your other assets. Um, the... Um, your payables can only be in your um, proprietary accounts and the rest of it's cash. Um, I don't know if there's anything there that you have questions or not. The pool still shows it's 18000 um, over at, um, on, at Cedar. Um, you notice 3330 says economic development other. That's some of that leftover general fund economic development that we still got to deal with. And why? And part of that shows up because of the old system where when you closed out the books, it was automatic transfer. And then until we can get that cured, we're going to see these things pop up. 
we're working with Eddie, we're working with, um, to, to try to get some of that taken care of. I would like you to look at, we have been taking all of our wages because we couldn't follow the wages, and you might as well know this because you're gonna get these financial statements, you're gonna ask what's going on. <clears throat> The wages in the past have been broken up um, by percentages. So if somebody paid, let's say somebody made $1,000, then 20% of that was charged to the parks or 20% was charged to streets or whatever. A whopping 60% was coming out of the sewer. And along with that, of course, is the payroll taxes that are charged against that $1,000, the insurance that's charged against that. So a payroll sheet took a full page of breaking down two cents here, two dollars there, whatever. So we brought all that back into the general fund and just set up a payroll account. That made it possible to follow through and see um, a total on one sheet without having to recreate it and bring it all back together. It also helped us see that the insurances were being taken out correctly, etc. The city pays a flat $500 towards health insurance. There's certain um, guidelines. No, there's their ordinances. They're not guidelines. Uh, you have to work for the city full time or you have to work for so long or you have to all of this. So we have an IRA account. I think the public should know this. IRA is an individual retirement account. The city pays 3% of the gross wage. The employee can choose to pay more. There is a limit, a top limit, I can't think of what that is off the top of my head. But you have to work for so long and make, meet certain requirements and you're eligible for this. I think everybody's familiar with them. Most of you, are, you know, have these abilities or these um, assets in your job, maybe, uh, benefits. The $500 has been since I came on the board for a while, there was, it was considered an, a pre-tax and then it was a post-tax. Um, and so when this went into the computer, it would be marked as such and wages or certain taxes and or taken out. Well, I found out through one of the suppliers of one of our insurances, which is a supplementary health insurance. We have Colonial, we have Aflac, we have those things available for our employees. That in fact, Crofton has a, what is it called, a, a 125 cafeteria plan. And that is a federal program that allows you to pay and the employee to pay a certain, any, a certain amount of money, and that's all set up in the program without paying tax on it. And that's all taxes. So it's the same as I, the, the, the employer would pay the insurance premium without even going to the employee. So there's no deductions, there's no taxes, there's no anything. This has taken some time to get a hold, and, and I still don't know who set the program up. I went through one of the insurance agents who went two levels up in his company to find a copy, an unsigned copy of the plan. Or maybe it's signed, I think one part of it is signed. So we're, we're still looking for some of that, but, but, it's on file somewhere because when someone tried to drop that plan, we got immediate answer back, can't drop this because it's in section 125. And you have only a certain time in the year when you can add or drop. 
So we have been working to make sure that that is done correctly so that we're not in trouble with IRS. We have, um, then we have the 500, what are we gonna do with that? Well, um, if somebody's insurance costs them 400, do they just not get that other $50? Well, our cafeteria plan says that you can get it in cash, but the kicker is that it has to be spent on medical insurance. So you can get it in cash, you can go buy your own policy, but it still has to be spent on insurance, and if you don't spend it on insurance, you don't get it. So all of those things have come to bear, and it's been a long, hard road to get pretty darn close. So, by putting all of that into one account, we were able to see it. And then by using QuickBooks and resetting, Lisa and I spent two days on for probably three hours at a time getting it set up and so that we can just plug them in and it automatically takes it out and it's not separating. Therefore, those wages have not come out of the streets or the sewer or any of the rest of it. They're in there. We have clarified with Eddie and the um, auditors have agreed that it can be done that way. And, the, and Eddie has helped us set up some memorized things to, that we will eventually be able to use with a click of a button. That, um, for example, if we want to expense some to the sewer, then we can take a set amount of hours or a set amount of money and, and have it set where all of the deductions and stuff then, and we can, we need to avoid transfer because when we use the word transfer, all those transfers that were made from in QuickBooks that, that were set up, that were transfers that we all know went 999 and ask your accountant where the, where the designations and nobody could follow and that's what happened to some of the, uh, the uh, economic development. And when you do that, then when you get to your budget, the state says, well, you've got this transferred money you've got to account for. So rather than do transfer, we need reimbursement. So if we're going to pay our wages out of the general fund, then we reimburse that general fund out of one of the restricted funds, if we, or the sewer, or the roads, or whatever. A lot of times it's one stinking word that gets you into the good graces of the auditors so that they know what you're doing and we know what we're doing. So it's not a transfer, but a reimbursement. So we're on the edge of that. So if you will look at the balance sheet and you will look under water, we have $90,000 in there. Under the sanitation, we have $301 because we don't, we don't, we never did pay wages out of that because we, they, they, you know, it's picked, it's a contract with the baby wages. But look at the sewer, 220 grand. So you see where that 60% of the wages was coming out of the sewer. If, as I go back through the history, at one time the residents here were paying seven or eight or nine dollars for their sewer bill. And then it went to 32. And I've had a lot of, well why? Why does it cost so much? You don't do anything in the sewer. It was done purposely because when we began to look at the sewer, and this was before I even came on the board, but I know the history because of talking to the people, um, you're going to have to have some money to pay for that sewer. And some of the lending companies said, we're not going to even talk to you because you don't charge enough for your sewer. So raise your rates. So the rates were raised in order to get money for the sewer, and then they were used for payroll. Nothing illegal. It was a source of it. It was a source of money. But look what happens now. 
we have two hundred thousand dollars sitting there. Now we're going to use some of that, but we're going to do we'll probably do a reasonable amount. The guys put a lot of time in at the sewer plant, and they'll put more in. But that's one of the happy things that we'll hopefully we can get to before midnight that the sewer plant's ready to move forward. So. Um, in, in your balance sheet, I just want to draw attention to the fact that, um, you know, if, when you, if you look at your cash, um, there's a thing that they call your, I forgot the word, but in the, the position, your, your financial position rather than a balance sheet because it deals with the um, accrual, the, the fun, a government fund account, okay? So right now we look pretty good because in our assets we've got close to a million dollars. So the next one I would draw attention to is that profit and loss budget versus actual. And again, I just want to draw up to the fact that um, since these that were done, Kathy put these in to this account or into this program in the computer with the big numbers that come off of the um, budget, which is a two-page thing. So um, I dug out the, the ones, the, the one that broke down every line, and if we can put those in, you'll have a better idea of, of whatever's there. When you see the over budget, uh, for example, or the under budget, uh, let's just go down like the um, the personal real property, your current property tax. <clears throat> We've collected sixty-three thousand. We were projected to get one hundred and seventy-five, and that's given to us by the county. We don't do that. Those numbers come in from the state and the county. What they're projected, we'll be getting. So we are not uh, basically over budget. We're under budget. We've got one hundred twelve thousand yet to come. So we've only collected 36%, in other words. So if you run down those lines, if you want to look at that, that's kind of interesting sometimes. The other thing is your, um, that I pulled for you was the, but the profit and loss by fund, and there is your actual water, sewer, and garbage, uh, whatever. Well, I'm still on that thing. Um, I want to say that the recycled trailer, if the guys tell me, is getting pretty close to half full, so people are using it. That's good news as far as I'm concerned. Um, I talked with Brett again the other day and and because um, we wondered how it would go. We didn't have an idea how much it would be used and how often it would have to be dumped. If we have to dump that trailer once a month, it's a $250 pickup. It's $50 a ton. That's recycled. Most of it's paper. It'll weigh almost nothing. Um, I guesstimated at $300 a load. If, they, if you put a lot of glass in there instead of paper, it'll be more. If you put stuff that's not recyclable in there, the charges for waste amount, then it's really going to be more. Uh, because the grant didn't come through, but because I had asked Brett to work on this and he'd been working on it for quite a while when he called and said, I've got this ready, and I said, let us know when you're ready to move it, and he said, um, the next morning he's, it was coming, so it's there. Use it, use it with happiness and whatever. Um, if we, uh, I'm going to, you know, we can uh, reapply for that grant now in June, June or July, so if we get it, we get it. If we don't, we'll make the adjustments. Um, I'll pay for the first load. We'll see what, that way we'll know how much it's gonna cost. One of the reasons they denied the grant was because we didn't know exactly what it was gonna cost. And that's pretty hard to do if you've never had it picked up, so. So, just so everybody's on the same page with that. Um, let me find my... Here. All right. Cheryl, can I ask a question on the financial statements? Sure. I noticed that you just printed off the profit and loss by fund just for proprietary funds. Is there any reason you didn't do it for the streets and the, uh, all that? None today except that we were just playing out of time. So how is the, the council 
make decisions if they don't have all the financial papers? Well, we can take all the companies, ask for them. They can come in at any time. They're on the computer, they can ask for them to be sent to them. But Okay, I'm, I'm Well, I'm just saying it. that you, you say it. Most of the time happen. they are, Irma. We've got a new clerk that's been here 12 days. Give us a break. Well, I'm just saying, you're taking all the wages out of general, and you look at your water and your sewer, you don't know what your actual profit and loss is. Of. That's all I'm saying. So We don't have a profit and loss. We have a financial, we, we don't have a profit and loss anywhere except in the proprietary, which is water, sewer, and garbage, and that's there. You have a you have to know if your street account's doing well or if we have Look in your balance sheet. Look in your balance sheet. <laughs> if you go to um, 3300, 3310 streets, there's $74,000 there. How much expense do we have? How much wages are going to come out of that? You know, that's, that's Look at your budget versus. But you're not expensing the wages out of the water, the sewer, the streets, okay. the parks, the swimming pool. Okay. That's my point. That okay. We're not getting a true picture. And I think I explained why, and I think I explained that it will happen. So. If we want to pick forever, we can do that or we can move on. The financial statements um, have been reviewed. Uh, have you had time to look at the claims or do you want to come back to them or what do you want to do with the claims council? Or do you want to wait till the end of it? Are we only buying gasoline from one place? No, we spread it around. Um, Every other month or something? Like that. No, they usually do like the lawnmowers or the, the pickups one place and the lawnmowers another place, etc. Why do you see something over? Well, I can see step and service is the only place for gas. I'm playing. Got C Mark there. Down on me, now to put fuel down on C Mark because of. of of Sometimes they don't come in, especially when we've got a meeting at the first. It's Kirk and, Kirk and Michaels at 8141. That's the sewer. That's the engineer's I, I, re I realize that. So what portion did we pay him so far of that 100? It's almost all paid, I think. It is almost? Oh, we got we got some more to come with that. We got them on later with the sewer. If that's all right. And this law enforcement for Brian Paulson, what for training? Yeah, we can talk about that. Uh, Brian is um, Brian is the guy that has helped us all the way through with Jonathan gone, right? And he works part time. Is he still on part time? Yet? Yeah, yeah. And um, he is. He needs to be evaluated, I guess is the word, um, to see if he if he has to recertify. Because he's been out a full time for a while and then he worked in South Dakota so that he's back in Nebraska. So the hundred dollar fee is um, to send his stuff to to Grand Island and have him verify what he has to do or doesn't have to do and he won't work anywhere but here so I'm going to ask if we could pay that hundred dollars for him so because he wouldn't he wouldn't be working anywhere else if he did. so this is a one time thing you gotta pay with yeah if he has to go to the back school we can talk about that later but so I told him I'd bring it to you guys and see what you said And so, uh, I haven't looked at the, the bill yet, and this, this water repairs, I don't know how many that is for that kind of money. So There's about four or five of them. Did he charge us by the, did we have four well, or five? Well, you know how to charge it. 
you want to call that? Yes. You want to wait on this? I would. Um, then if, if, uh, we can move on then because Aaron is up, I think. Um, yeah, go on. Does it matter which one I start with? Or? Nope. Never when you're me? You want this? Okay, not a public speaker, so just bear with me. Um, we have had several meetings with our pool committee. We were asked to, we were asked to form a committee by JEO to form an idea of what amenities we would like for the city for our future pool. And we have met twice and we think we have a good idea. We looked at, we are really in favor of the Osmond design that JEO has done. Our committee really liked it. It's pretty straightforward. It doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles, but it will be wonderful for our kids. We also liked I don't have a printout of this, I have this giant book, but the bathhouse design of Ponca State Park, I don't know if anyone's been in there, but it's really streamlined and it's easy to get in and out of, and the committee all decided that they really liked that as well. So I was asked to contact JEO and ask if they could form a scope for us as to how much it would cost and how much it would cost to survey the land. So they have sent a contract for us and I'm asking the council's approval to sign this contract so we can move forward because we will not be able to obtain that donor's money or do anything with it until we start with the design. So our pool committee has full support of this. We are asking for the council support and we would love to be able to start fundraising and really get this going for our kids and our, for our community. And I think it's a wonderful idea. Uh, does anyone have any questions from the council on this? There's contracts up there if anyone has any questions. It'll cost $9,000 for the survey of the land. Just because it is a little low lying there, they need to be able to find out how much it's going to cost. To raise it up higher and for water mitigation so we don't run into issues. And it also will cost about 37000 for the design. Since we are using another town's designs for both entities, it's costing us substantially less than it would if we started from scratch. So that's another reason why we decided to go with that. Um, does anyone have any questions on that? Aaron. Did you say 37,000? Yes, 37,000. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. 32,000. Yes. Which the Osmond the total, the total is 41,000. The schematic. For the schematic plus schematic the survey. May involve your underneath part. Okay, the schematic may involve the underneath. underneath side, I'm not sure. I just got this today, so I'm sorry. I talked to Andrew with JEO on Friday, and he's been really working on this, and Dave Henke is also. Dave was out last week, so that's why it took us a little longer to get it. But our committee is very excited about this, and we would love the idea of moving forward. We would possibly, yes? Are there any funds available to go towards that 41000 yes. to start with? Yes, the, I have this number. I'm sorry. This isn't my, my forte. Um, there's $18,897.89 in the Cedar Security account that was used specifically that the committee had raised for fundraising last time. And so we thought we could use that. It's a city account. So we don't get to decide it, but the council can decide that that money can go towards that. There's also lost funds of $14,758.18. There's more now. And then Cheryl was looking. Because that's just this. <laughs> that's just this. <laughs> um, that's close enough. Yeah. Plus potential for more. So I guess we're just asking 
For your support, because our kids would love it and our community would love it, we're not asking. We would really like to start fundraising and there's a bunch of grants out there. There's one available in September for up to 400,000 and there's one in January for up to 900,000. I cannot guarantee that we will get all of that amount, but we would love to try for it. JEO will help us with those grant writings and do the best that we can do with it. Um, the family has asked that we get a plan. The donor family has asked that we get a plan, that we let them know how much it's going to cost, which is why we have to do the schematics and the surveying to get the cost of the final project. And um, they need to know how much we're, they are, we are requesting that they pay and um, where we're going to get the other funds. So. Uh, you said it's going to cost $90,000, okay, but the income is 41000 How much money do they need up front to start with? $9,000? $41,000. $41,000. Okay, so we sign that contract now. When we start moving down the road, they come back here to make sure this pool is all right. What is it going to cost us by the time that pool is done for our contract? That's why they have to do this first. Pretty close to $3 million. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what are these these engineers? What's their fee going to be? As far as I know, that is From all. From start to the finish. I heard something now. Uh, some time ago, somebody came up with a remark here: 100 to 103 to 113,000. If we reinvented it. I don't think that we have. Um, I don't think they've given us anything, but Mr. McNally said, remember once, that it's not uncommon for engineers to get 10% of the total cost. 10% of the construction cost. And when I talk, I talked to um, Dave and Viv mm -hmm. yesterday or this morning, they called, and um, I said, but you've already got this design, mm -hmm. so all you've got to do is take Osmond off of it and put Crofton on, so that's going to cut in half, right? And I said, well, maybe not quite half. But, um, but, but Aaron's right, that's going to cut some money. Um, the, um, if I, can, do you mind? If no, I, please okay. don't. Um, the, the one thing, if I'm getting this right, mm -hmm. Your man wants to know that we plan to spend money yes. and he doesn't have to pay at all. Is that correct? Yes. If you figure this at $3 million and they're given a million, that's $2 million to the city. They, they need we to do know. Want to excuse me. We want to spend $3 million. Just wait, just wait, just wait. Just wait. No. It's, okay, so the design of Osmond's pool, which we want, is $1.6 million. Plus about two hundred and ten thousand for engineering fees. That's that is right. just that is just <clears throat> the pool. A bathhouse is approximately five hundred thousand dollars. They did bring up several options on how we can try to get that cost down by doing different things, working with different people. But that's an approximate <clears throat> idea. Is that is Osmonds is about one point eight million if you look at it with engineering fees. When we were thinking of it, it was just 1.6. And my interpretation of that was it also included the engineering, but it didn't, based on what I was talking to J.E. So. The night they were here, they said 2.6. Okay, right. they said 2.6. Um, I said, we would like to, is there a way that we can set a budget or an uppermost amount that we do not want to go over? And they said they would try to work with us, but a pool, costs what a pool costs and so that is what that's that's what I've got I guess. I understand that three is probably high but I'm going to the three side. No, I just don't want it running around town that we're spending three that's right. No, no. We've said no we it's well, not that. And we swelled under three is what we was but we won't know point nine. No. <laughs> we don't we won't what it's going to cost until they survey it. If that exactly. surveying is good, it costs. they'll know after the survey what they're working with. They have to get out there. They have to dig. Correct. I and then, and then we will know. And then we can proceed. And exactly. that's why we're only going with the first. Step. Yes, that's why we're doing the state hire an engineer to yes. do everything right now. Yep, we are doing it in phases, basically because it also helps us with our grant applications. 
we have to have phase one, which is our conceptual design, in order to apply for that grant in September. And you also have to have the grant. What? And you also have Yes, we have to have it to get the donors approval, the family's You've approval. You've got to start with that engineer. So we have to hire an engineer in order to move forward with anything. So they want to know that we are actually going to put this money to use and that we are going to use it for great things and we're going to specifically use it for the pool because that is what the family wants it to be used for. And my understanding is it will go into restricted funds, right? Is that, yep, so it will not go to anything else but the pool. So my understanding is up front we will have come, come up with 41000 Yes. <coughs> and so if we don't go with the the design that they have because it's going to come up around $3 million and we say we can't do that, then what happens to that $41,000? I'm going to tell you this, I've got lots of rural people that have said to me, if Crockton's going to spend $3 million, then we need to pay exactly for a That's why we need to stop that, right? What's that? We need to stop that, right? That's right. Yeah. And that room, I mean, we don't want to spend any more than we need to on this. We I want a very, very well. We don't. Mean? We don't need bells and whistles in our pool. We just need a nice pool for our kids. We don't need a huge, giant slide that requires multiple lifeguards. We're not asking for that. We're asking for two diving boards. We're asking for a bare bones um, bathhouse with two toilets, a sink, two showers. No, um, not really any extras. We want a couple, uh, we possibly would like to have a lily pad, amen lily pad amenity in the middle and possibly a little slide for, the, for our toddler age kids. That is, I mean, we're not asking for a ton of amenities and they could also include those after the fact. So this initial step, if you know, we give JO the $41,000, then that schematic design is ours to keep. Yeah, as far as I know, yes. Yeah. And then so JO, what they I mean, have to fix. And then I imagine you have to Are you thinking of changing engineers? No, but I just, the design stays. So there's things, you know, that mm -hmm. you can have somebody come here and have other subcontract out. If you hire JEO as an engineer, they're going to oversee everything they, that you do or they're not going to do it. You can't ask an engineer to come in and do part of it and then change things up. But they will bid out those individual projects. Absolutely. They so do hopefully our local contractors will jump on that and be able to get involved because it would be wonderful. There's also tax credits available that those local contractors could definitely get and utilize. So. That's that's why I kind of because I had um, you said there was two of those grants available. Mm -hmm. um, in January there is a grant for five hundred and sixty-two thousand. Um, they said if I think that's like a civic center, yep. Yep. whatever certified. Um, it's available in March, but in order to even apply for that, you have to have your design, you have to have the plan, yes. basically. Yes. Um, but there are some things that you can do while you're while they're doing their plan. For example, I said, can you build it in the summer? Can you build it in three months? How long does it take? Um, think they were like nine months or six to nine months to do the design and to do the surveying and do this and this and this and this. Remember that we are a three month a year building thing. I mean, as far as, you know, a cold and ice and so forth and so on. So anyway, um, there, there's another there's another couple of things that they said. One of the things they said was you could start the demolition of what's there. You could have that done by the fall. You could, um, you know, start some other things while they're doing the the, the signs, the scene, the, the yeah, the, the design. They have the design for the pool, but that's just the pool. The biggest part of the engineer's design is underground with the dirt and the, the hauling the rock in and so forth. And I said, we had one of these before for the 2.6, but if you recall that meeting that night, 
they had so many loads of rock and so many build up so much foot, this, dirt, and so forth. And I said, you don't have a, a price on that. They said, no. And I said, that's another million. And he kind of said, yeah, well, maybe. That's why I said three million. So, but those things, I said, I, in the conversation I had with them this, I think it was one, I said, we need to have better figures. If we think you're going to haul 10 loads, then we need to know what that's going to cost. So that's, that's the only thing I want to add is that there was a, um, um, and th th there's a whole contract here, and, and I would expect the board to look through that carefully and see if you want to yes, sign so in. Yes, it's a $41,000 contract worth 9000 give or take, short mm -hmm. of accumulated funds okay. to pay it. They okay. That's the bottom line. We will invoice you monthly for work completed to date. Payments due upon receipt of invoices unpaid after 30 days will accrue interest at 12% per annum. So we probably can... They bill at they bill as they do so, services. So we so can. So you don't bill, you don't pay you the forty one thousand right away. It's the more the more you can get in there, the less interest you're going to pay. But that's how Kirk and Michael have been. We've been paying them by the month. So the forty one doesn't have to go in immediately. No. No. That's what I'm reading. Yep. That's what I asked them as well because I said, do we need to write you a check for forty one thousand, or is this as services are rendered? And they said that it was as services were rendered. So. The forty-one thousand doesn't include the fuel, technical exploration. That would be in addition to it. Doesn't include what, Jim? I just got this at today. Would you say <laughs> the fuel technical exploration is not included? Right. And forty-one thousand. Right. So you're talking probably another ten thousand. Yeah. For the you bet for that whole survey and the whole, figuring out what's there. That's a touchy thing. Going to no. move up. You know, build up that land and so forth. I have talked to a guy across in here, close by. Said he would demolish our pool for nothing. I think I can talk to him about bringing dirt so we don't have to buy it. I think he's like accessible to rock that we got. Some of that can be cost down. Don't know how much until we know how much material needs to be brought back in. So I have an individual that can keep the cost down for us. He said he can demolish it, clean it up, and I think he can bring the dirt or whatever raise that the engineer has to have. I think we can haul that in so we don't have to spend that out of our pockets. And the rock that we need to put a base down. And the engineers mentioned that, that if let's say that um, that he decided that he, that he would, and they, he'd have to work under the engineers because that, in order to get his tax credit, they have to work mm -hmm. under there. But let's say that he came in and said, I'm going to take the pool away and get rid of the concrete, and that's worth $5,000. No um, he may donate that $5,000, but he puts a price on it, and he gets 40% of that as a Nebraska tax credit, so when he pays his taxes, and it's, it's refundable over time. I mean, if you can't use it all this year, you, it's a direct tax credit. Well, so there's a guy that's got accessibilities to help us out of putting dirt, taking the thing out, and putting dirt and dirt back in. Absolutely. You know, you guys, we can double down this pool house, too. I get $500,000. absolutely sounds like a mansion to me. Yeah. And that was just a, that yeah. was just an yeah. idea. Let's not scare people. Let's not scare them. We need no, to make this. No, that's another thing. We've got a lot of volunteers in our community. Yes. Let's use them. Yep. Well, yeah. they got to be. I'm not in charge of it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. contractors because there might be different ways that we can work this where we bid out the bathhouse by itself with our, you know they have to follow the engineers guidelines and everything but 
he did ask different ways. There are ways to save money, like cast in place, using cast in place concrete. There's different things that he was bringing up that would bring your costs down. The 500,000 was just a general idea. Not of that specific amount, but of just an idea as to how much a bathhouse typically costs. But we would like bare bones, yeah. covered, guideline, like state approved bathhouse. We do not need all the bells and whistles. I guess I keep saying that, yeah, but we don't need. Aaron, does, yeah. the, does the 500,000 okay. for the bathhouse, does that just, does it include any equipment that operates the pool? I'm sorry, chemicals or anything no. like that? Not that no. I know of. Not the chemicals. Okay. Okay, this, this, let's just say that cost 1.8. Okay. Okay, and let's say that we got $113,000 engineering fees. That's on top of that. Is that correct? Um, we so that I'm going to give you Osmond's numbers. I can give you Osmond's numbers if you'd like. Well, we brought that up two, three times and we've never gotten a definite answer. 210000 for Osmond was engineering fees. 1.6 was the pool. That's from JEO. What year was the Osmond pool built? They started, they're still building. It's in the process now. Mm -hmm. It's in the process now. Yeah, that, I just found that out. So their engineering fees were included in that 1.6? No. That's what I know. No. That was the 210,000. Above that. She said that already. If I'm not explaining anything, just let me know. I'm sorry. Perfect. <laughs> sorry. Which makes that pretty close to two grand. Yeah, about two million. Yeah. A little under two million is what their pool is. They did not choose to do a bathhouse, which ours needs it. So we have to do a bathhouse. So that's one of the reasons they'll be a little less expensive. But there again, you get. Local contractors will really. One thing we need to emphasize, or I would like to see emphasize, is even if you get local contractors, they've got to work under that engineer. For sure. Because they, they're going to have to bring it all together. Yep. Yeah, the engineer, I don't think, will let anyone work without them signing and dotting. It is very normal procedure for once that contract, once that design is done and they're ready to move ahead. Part of the fees that go to the contractor is for their letting out bids. They put together a bid that says we're going to build this bathroom or we're going to build this supply room for the chemicals or whatever. And they put those bids out and advertise them and people come in and bid them. And they help choose your contractor. In fact, they, I don't know if they have total control or whether they said it gets involved. I'm not sure about that. So my question to you is, when will JO have the information we need to give to the job so we can As soon as the city signs the contract, they can start working. They'll set a time and start working on our schematics. I don't have a dead time for them because we don't have a contract with them. So did, did they give you a, a, some time of an idea? Three months. Approximately, they have. But I think if we told the donor we hire JEO, this is what we're doing. We can follow you with every single step of the way. If you have questions, call me. Schematic design. It's yeah. the, the time. The, the schematic design phase, which is what this is for, yeah. is approximately 90 calendar days, yeah. June to August 2020. Okay. No. Yeah. I mean, no. See, and that would get it in there in time for that fall grant. And that is what we need. Okay. Yeah, that is, so that's that what is all we need. For. And we could, I, if we, if the family wasn't ideally ready to fully commit that money to us because we don't have an official design yet for that grant, we would need a letter from the family saying we pledge this money, and then we can and then we can still submit the grant. I checked with that. So, if they want us to be. Fully, I like every T crossed and I's dotted. Then all we need is the family saying we are willing to pledge this amount for this pool, and we could still apply for the grant. Okay. So. And and one of the things that the guy that we have called with today, but he's the financial guy, he wasn't okay. okay. Um, he said that um, very seldom is a grant given 
that reimburses anything. So you don't want to move ahead of the grant. <laughs> you, want, you know, but if, if but if they say you have to have matching funds, then you want to get your part to make that, yeah. and then then the grants become much easier. Mm -hmm. And I, my understanding is that he's willing to work in there too, so you get that other leg of JPO that's involved in that, and that's good. Grants good are great. advice. Yeah. yeah, they can help put that money together. We also they did, we did. Jim and I've talked. I think Garen and I've talked about the possibility. Of, Jim explained that the money from the donor needs to come to the city of Crofton, which would be go into the general fund because that's the city of Crofton as such for him to be able to get his his um, his tax exempt standing. That, that we get the tax exempt and he gets his deduction for whatever taxes. Once it hits that bank account, the council needs to vote or do by referendum that they set up a separate, correct me at any time, a separate bank account that is earmarked for the swimming pool. Then you can put whatever restrictions or additions you want on there. We feel that it would be good to put that million dollars all by itself so that that family can say, we want this to go here, we want, they have some input. Then we open another account that says every, this is stuff that you know Donations. somebody some yeah fundraising yeah. Marietta goes to the bank yeah. today and she says I'm gonna throw ten dollars in that and she can just deposit yeah. it right there. Just keep the yes. Yeah. And keep yep. the Cedar security yep. because there's people that bank there and so it's open to anybody that wants keep to throw some money. In. Open. The only thing I'd say about Cedar Security is just the observation that it is just a plain checking account and they take a dollar every month. It's only $12 a year, but I'd like to see that put into a now account so you'd be gaining interest instead of charging the dollar, you know. And I don't know if that's not possible, how that was set up, whatever, but that can be checked on. But that would put three accounts towards the swimming pool plus the fact that you've got your, um, you know, your sales tax account. Uh, there's always a possibility that, Larry brought this up a long time ago, of adding to the sales tax, but that has to go on a ballot, and I don't think the town's in the mood for any more taxes at this point, but I may be wrong. <laughs> there is a, you know, there is a ballot this fall. So. <clears throat> But I know the schools want to change to file a bond and we've got, we got the sewer and we'll get to the sewer, which you're going to have a good heart attack on that one too. Erin, did you want to say something? I just wanted to remind the council that the, the pool committee raised all the money that we have for the purpose of a new pool. Yep. And so I would encourage you to please go forward with this so that we can move forward with a new pool. We really need I don't think there's a question about that. I, I, I don't know what you mean about... You I'm mean, just reminding the council of what's going on. I'm, we're very positive yes, and for this. Yeah, that, that was the intention of it. Yeah. 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 I think it would be, I think it'd be a sin if we didn't. And while we're on the subject, um, I made this remark at the last meeting, but most of you weren't here. The board voted to close the pool this summer based upon the COVID-19. There, there has been a lot of talk about the governor opened the pools. I beg to differ with you. He didn't just say the swimming pools are open. That's not in there in any place. The swimming pool comes under the gathering, which is limited to 25 people or so many per square foot, and I don't know what square footage is out there. But if it's limited to 25 people, that's what I, I I'd hate to be the person that's gonna choose which 25 kids are going in. <laughs> Plus the fact that you've got the whole thing, we have lost $20,000 every year for the last three years. Went back and looked at just this past year, but I just quickly looked at the three, but then I looked at the income, because I wasn't looking at that, and I thought, well, duh, where's it? 
I think that we that we took in about ten thousand. So that means it costs thirty thousand to get it up and going and clean it and warm the water and pay for the water and pay for the labor and so forth and so on. So if we don't make that 10,000 because 90, even 50% of the families are not gonna let their kids go swim even if we do open it, then we're gonna lose another 25 or whatever, another 5,000 or whatever they don't come in. I had said earlier that if, the, if we took some good looks at this, that maybe at least at the end of the season, and make sure that everything comes together here as we budget for next year that perhaps we could use the 20,000 we would normally lose and put it towards the new pool. If we start that excavation this fall, we're not gonna get that built for next season. So if we lose two years, maybe that's 40 grand that could go towards the pool. And that's something that the board has to decide. I'm, you know, I'm just saying, and we don't know how the sales tax is going to go. We don't know what the economy is going to go, but let's think about it. Yep. I got a question. We get 20% of that 1% for the pool, correct? Mm -hmm. What if we take some of that money or that 20% and put towards this, what is it, 41,000? Yep. That well, that's, where that's, we get, that's, where, that's what we're counting on. Right. Right. That's, mm -hmm. great. that's, that's the only great. way we'll have 41,000. Yep. All right, that's fine. That's where it's gonna to have to go as to whatever expense that comes up. Is that, is that agreeable with everybody? I mean, that's what it's for, isn't it? Great. Yeah, as soon as you guys give us the okay, we'd love to set up a Facebook page and really get the public's input on different things and really start fundraising, so. I know people that are ready to drop money into that account as soon as they know it's going. So if they know that we, the city is behind us, we would love to get our whole community together and start thinking positively and get this pool a reality. So, feel. Don't you want to call on it? Make us happy. <laughs> <laughs> There is a contract in front of all of you from JEO. It's an agreement between the owner and the engineer for professional services. It outlines what the engineer's job is and what the owner is. The scope of this is the engineer shall provide or cause to be provided the service set forth in Exhibit A. And the owner's responsibilities are um, outlined in Section 3 of Exhibit B. The owner shall pay engineer as set forth in Exhibit A and uh, per terms in B, and the fee for the project is as stated in A, boy, they don't tell you a whole lot, do they? Um, let's see, standard hourly rates schedule shall be adjusted annually um, as of January 1st to reflect equitable changes in the compensation payable to the engineer. Currently, current hourly rate schedule can be provided upon request. And then there's the place for all the signing and the um, identification of the parties. Um, talks about the Crofton Aquatic Center. Zero depth entry, diving hopper and diving tower, floatables or floatable water walk, lap lane, zero depth feature, sprays, toddler slide, play structure, tipping buckets. Similar features intended for use in shallow water. Small water slide, drop slide, basketball hoop, shades, deck equipment. Um, and those are all changeable things. They're not set right. in stone. They're just ideas that he and I had talked about. And uh, it, it points out that the high groundwater is anticipated on the site. It recommends performing geotechnical investigations through specialized geotechnical firm. Therefore, JEO will assist the owner in contracting and coordinating the um, investigative effort. And then the field surveys, the designs. Um, let's look at it this way. Um, Haley, I think, I think what I heard you say was, this town obviously wants a swimming pool. In 2009 or whenever it was, they passed the sales tax. Is that when it was? 2009? Eight. Eight. Pardon? Eight? Eight. There was a sales tax referendum went before the voters and they voted to set aside some money for sale for the swimming pool. Then um, through the efforts of the citizens, there was some more money raised. Um, 
And so there is a love of swimming and kids in this community that says we want to build a pool. I don't think anybody on the council, nor your mayor, wants to stop that process. But I think that we want to do it correctly and legally and so that it will last another 50 years. That demands that you have a reputable engineer who leads that process. And I think that's why the gentleman who is willing to donate that money said that he wanted that process to be there. Um, I believe very strongly, like you, we want this, so let's move forward. 41,000 is doable. Even with everything else we've got, 41,000 is doable. The reason I pointed out the $200,000 in the sewer thing is not to say we've got money that we're not going to spend on wages, but to say in the whole scheme of things, money accumulates quite rapidly sometimes. And the 18,000, 14,000, if we could throw out another 20,000, that 41,000 is doable, but then we've got to be thinking down the road. And, and as much as you're saying, well, we don't want to scare everybody with 3 million, hey, if it costs 3 million, it costs 3 million. Let's do it right. I don't think we're going to scare anybody. We don't anybody. have a dollar amount until the engineer tells us. So. Well, I don't, you know, I, but, but you don't want that. It's the first thing that's going to say it. We're going to put 41000 out there. What, what's it eventually going to cost? I get that all the time. What's it going to cost? I think you need to think back a little bit about that, though. You need to think, you know, and I know everybody says don't go backwards. And I know what these guys are saying. What our community just went through and then also, oh, we're going to build a $3 million pool? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. put this town in a big old lot of I'm not saying we advertise it. I'm just saying that we don't need to, you have these to shy away from it. You're saying three million. It's going to get out. Then. Oh, yeah, we're going to build the three million dollar pool. So, like they're saying, you need to nip that in the butt right now. Because after everything the community just went through, and you throw that out, a three million dollar pool, people are going to be frantic. That's right. You need to pay your price. Well, too late because it's already on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I, and I don't mean to take this lightly, but let's, you know. Yes, it's serious. I, I think everybody's for this pool. Yeah. The thing that I see is this contractor or this engineer, he should be able to tell us what it's going to cost to get that pool taken out of there. How many, if it's going to be $20,000, we want to know $20,000. If it's going to cost so much to do the pool house, there's going to be so many thousand dollars. Well, they're not going to know that till they do these surveys and do the... Right, but that's what we need to know, yes. know because then if we come along and say, we'll take that pool out of there, and he said it's going to cost 20000 we get 20000 If we don't know that, they could tell us why. What are we going to do? I think that's what the that's why we do the survey and that's why we have that's why you trust design. your engineer so and then they're not going to move forward with anything until the council approves it uh, they won't do anything without them. okay for for you guys i, I duly noted that you don't want me to say it's going to cost three million okay so i'm not going to say that the sewer is going to cost us three million either you know so um all we got to do is find another couple here. people with another a couple million people. Crofton wants the pool. We need 41000 to get the back homework done. Yes. Yeah. We know we've got X amount in our pocket. Yes. It's doable. <clears throat> yeah, but it's we're not. It's not like we're going to have to start from scratch. Right. This is what our pool funds, that's what we've been saving. Yep. Well, here's we the. We get this done. The contractor has a list of each individual part. Yes. Then Yes. You can okay. at least fail and say, okay. okay, we as a city can do that. that this is the, you're, you're all talking about procedure, but we need to make a decision whether you're going to build a pool or not. It's going to cost money to do it. It's the end of the story. Let's go. Either we're going to be here all night. I'll make a motion to go ahead with this agreement between the GAO and the Crofton to get started on the, the pool and move on to the phases. Can I inject one other thing? Uh -huh. 
Erin okay. said she just got the contract this afternoon. Has the lawyer had a chance to look at the contract? <laughs> yes, I have. Oh. I sent it off as soon as I got it. I imagine. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And as, as I said, it's thirty-one thousand dollars on the face of the contract, but the other geotechnical survey is going to cost another ten thousand, I would assume. So you're actually looking at about forty-one thousand, probably. Fifty-one, because it's forty-one here. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody said that. <laughs> Yeah, I do you realize that if we get this donation money, I'm sure that they know there are other costs that we could use some yes. of this money yes. to cover some of these costs. Yes. I know they know that. Well, Susie, that's exactly what we were talking about. That if we make some effort and we get in a bind and need another, they'll if that money, if that million gets there, all we've got to do is say, are you willing to let that a hundred thousand go out to pay this cost? And I would talk to them, so I know they are willing. To I think I they're think they're very willing to they work with want us. They just want to build. Not, they want to build. Yes, they want to build. Now, Me too. yep, and they don't want it to sit there because we don't because we're waiting for another hundred or fifty thousand. Yeah. Yeah. All second, Larry, motion. Okay. Um, a motion by Larry to accept um, the um, contract with JEO uh, to start the um, process of the pool and seconded by Don. And let's see, let me find my. I have to get a bunch order. of papers on there, so. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I just don't want to get the same order. Um, Arlene. Yes. Isla. Yes. Don. Yes. And um, Larry. Yes. Thank okay. you. Yes, yeah, so let's, okay. let's get to it. Let's All right. Here Crafton has had CDBG housing funds since 2002. We have had funds sitting there for a while, and the state, they've been inactive. The state has said that we need to use them or send them back. The easy, I've talked to the State Economic Development Council, and they suggested repurposing these funds to have ADA style amenities around our city. If we chose to continue to use these for housing, this process could take up to six months and we don't have that time because we need to use them by, or we need to submit our, whatever the council decides to do by the end of this month. So, I have suggested that we look at a couple different things. I kind of got, I got rough estimates from a contractor or two. These are not set in stone contracts or we have to go out, we have to get bids on these projects. We will bid them out. We have two years to complete these projects. So, um, one of the things we thought of was having a handicap accessible door here. A push button that opens our door. That would be approximately $3,000. If the door needs to be replaced because they can't do that with this, then that would be additional costs. There's the South Park. Cheryl brought up a good idea to connect the shelter to the bathrooms. I didn't realize that that, was, that wasn't a thing. But connecting the shelter to the bathrooms and then also connecting this, the shelter to the street. There's no way to get to the shelter without going to the vet memorial. But if you go from the vet memorial, there's no way to get to the shelter. So if you connect the vet memorial with an ADA style sidewalk to the shelter, and then go from the shelter to the bathrooms and then also to the street, that's approximately $5,900 with curb cuts to make ADA compliance. There's another choice of installing ADA curb cuts downtown where you have if you've driven down, if you've ever walked with a stroller or a wheelchair, you know that you can't get, you can't get over certain parts. There, there's no curb cuts. There's no ADA accessibility downtown. If you did two curb cuts per, inner, per corner, that's about $2,000. These are rough estimates, so don't quote me on prices. These are, we still have to, we'd have to bid out the project. But there's about nine 
I counted about nine that would need to be done. We have approximately $29,000 in that fund, minus some fees to ha have, the pro have the program administrated by the Northeast Nebraska Economic Development Corporation. So we're looking at about, using about $20,000 over two years. We are, still have one account that is paying in on our housing. And so we, if, we, if we essentially draw out these projects for about two years, we can use that income still on these projects. And we could potentially get a couple more curb cuts or unindoor as long as it's ADA approved. I just had the thought, maybe we could use some of the pool. You'd have to decide tonight. <laughs> <laughs> we just have to decide. Yeah, to it, was, it just has to be decided, and the council just has to decide. Right? Yep. See, it doesn't have certain projects. No, we, we kind of have to have a plan. We have to have a plan, and I have to let them know so he can submit the letter. And then saying that we, and then we, and then we retain the control of those funds to use in our yeah. okay. And it has to be ADA style projects. So that's. I think it'd be great. I, that sidewalk project at the shelter, I think is an amazing one. It's up to the council as to what you guys would like to do with it. But um, there's another idea, that, that $18,975. That is to connect the sidewalk all the way from Highway 12, all the way this way. So, and also to do sidewalk to the bathroom, sidewalk to the shelter, that's the whole thing. And then it would also include some include some root grinding on those trees. It would go right up to this the it would go right up to the curb and it'd be an ADA style sidewalk. Let's just so you, let's just do the I think you have to pick up a little bit. An idea. That's my understanding. <clears throat> just yeah. if these are okay ideas, then we could list them all. We just have to have an idea. So we've got doors and sidewalks. Doors, sidewalks, curb cuts. Anyone Maybe we can get a better door out there. I would like to say I think that's an awesome idea in the park. Yes. Now yeah. it's falling over twice on a scooter in the park. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that would just be the awesome. The sidewalk to the back. Is there any place else on yes, the wood park please. or anything, Irma, that would be a help? Or? Well, it'd be nice to have sidewalks at the shelter there, too, but... You know, this is, <coughs> this is the one you have most used, okay. right? Okay. Yeah. And the cutouts up by the bank, especially. Yeah, that, that corner is awful. There's nothing there. No. Is there any way we could uh, study this for about a month and table it until July? No. 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 Uh, it has to be in by the end of June. Or you lose the money, right? Yep. Right. We have to send it on. Is there, the, the, one of the reasons that the doors came up here, of course we need doors because they leak bad and the, lock, the locks are bad and everything else. So we kind of talked about replacing both of them. And, um, you know, if you, if you just got an electrical button on there, that helps with that. The other thing is that one has the bar down the end, so that opens it up better. But what Aaron did find was you that have you'd have to have a ramp on that side. But so it has to got go in a different direction. You can't just go out to the sidewalk with the ramp because of ADA rules. You have to go out and then back, go up to the north. But maybe we could, you know, get back to the Those curb <laughs> cuts that you're talking about, there's a special plate that's got to be yep. put on there. That's that figured into this project. Yes, it is. Yep. And that's for two. So it's for about third, two thousand right? for each like corner. So oh, two per corner. Or two. Well, if you do two per corner, four thousand for if you wanted to go from one street to another. If you okay. had that, yep. two curb cutout. Each curb cutout is about a thousand dollars, I would say, if you. But you would want two, so you could go both directions, or you do one side of the street and the whole street is compliant, and then work on the next street as we have funds. If we have funds. We don't have to pick exactly how many curb cuts you want to do. You just have to say, we would like to do ADA style curb cuts in our downtown area. We would like to do ADA style sidewalk in our South Park. And we would like to have an ADA compliant door in our auditorium. 
is essentially what you would do. Are only on the corners of the well, we just leave it open so that we can have the open, you know, if we could get it. If we can get it, if we can get it so that it's accepted, well, then we can yes. work on how we just have to pick. You'd have to pick the, if you did all of it, there wouldn't be enough to do every single curb cut, but we could decide which intersections we would like to do. I think the idea in the park is a great idea. I think it is. And so you have people that are, you know, not so much in a wheelchair, but, you know, elderly people or... Yes. Aims, anything. Yep. yep, even people with a broken leg. You know, right from there. There's it's a broken. step up on that curve, and then you have to walk through the grass. Yep. So, yeah. so the 5900 includes a curb cut from the street to the shelter, like, to the shelter, and then the shelter to the bathroom, and then the bathroom to the shelter, like, to the shelter. So it's three separate sidewalks plus can I Can I entertain a motion that would um, ask for the ADA funds to be, to be repurposed for ADA purposes, and that Aaron would add a possible list to yep. that and do the paperwork yep. to apply for that to happen and to um, make that um, positive. Uh, make that happen this month before we lose our And heart. we have two years to do this project, so we will... But we don't have two years to look at No, we don't. No, we don't. Okay. Can I get that motion? So I'll make the motion to... The motion would be to transfer the CDBG fund to approved ADA project within the city. Okay. You get that, Lisa? To transfer... CDBG funds to the construction of ADA project within the city. Can you say repurpose along? And Arlene made that, and who would second it? I'll second it. Isla seconds it. Yeah. And the vote is be Don? Yes. Larry? Yes. Arlene? Yes. And Isla? Yes. Thank okay. You. Thanks, Eric. Okay, so on that we have done the pool, the uh, CBDG funds. Uh, I talked a little bit about the recycle, so that's done. Omaha Street's table because there's nothing going on right there. Uh, Northside Acres, um, we have the final paperwork to do on the purchase. And um, we have some work to do on financials. Okay, so. We need to make a decision um, about borrowing and or paying it outright, okay? I think that we need to table that. I know it needs to be done this month, but I think that we need to call another meeting that is strictly financial. And with that said, then, I would like to move into the new business, and I have people here that would like to talk about a fun run and I need to skip then down. We, we're going to talk about swimming pool and the sports and so forth with COVID. Okay. If if we can move to that last item, Jason. You want Basically, to we've been put on the fun run probably about the last 15 years here in Crofton. Um, this year definitely provides a lot of challenges and so forth like that there. And so what we were presenting here tonight was basically we're still willing to set up like a bull run and stuff like that and put all the stakes out, but we want to have it actually time. We want to put a finish shoot up there. And the only way I see it happening is, you know, basically we allow the people to come. You don't get the times or anything like that, but they would have their social distancing. So just like tonight, we're here. There's a group of guys. People come. They can go through the course. It's all laid out. Um, and then basically we've been talking with um, uh, Mr. Doerr about with the cross country kids as far as if there is a fundraiser like that we could really use that for a lot of scholarships and for regionals and for things with the cross country teams. Um, it would probably not make much difference as far as if we had people watching corners because it'd be the same amount of time as just how those people are going through. And so there'd probably be something like a free will donation or something like that there, but we envisioned it with that. But we just want to see what the city's thoughts were, if that would be something allowable this year or not, if we've done in the past, if we put those safety precautions in place, and if that would make sense to kind of still be festive with the 4th of July season and so forth like that and provide that community service. Thank you. 
And I, and I if, if you don't mind, I'm going to say that all of the baseball, softball, the fun run, all of those things are falling under that advice mandate. The governor's mandate. The governor's mandate. So as long as we follow those as long as we go, and they may change weekly, um, and just keep in touch with the office, keep in touch on, you know, you've got computers where you follow them through and so forth. But whenever those mandates come out, be sure you read everything. Don't read one line and say, oh, I can do this. Because <laughs> a lot of times later then it's restricted for one thing or another. Okay? I would ask the council if there's anybody that has an objection to the, that as, they, as they've laid it out. That's the 4th of July, right? It usually we do it um, the same time as the baseball game is, that evening where the fireworks are. So the night, whenever they decide to do the fireworks. It's that, but it's that 4th of July but celebration. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The yeah. night that they do the fireworks, which I think they're still planning on doing the fireworks, depending on that might look different. But, yeah, you know, but everything's you know. going to look different a little bit, just like this. Mm -hmm. you know. So uh, we have options, I guess. One option is to kind of stagger start them and have them run the route. Another option is we can say, Um, we were just looking for a lot more on that. As long as they're within the guidelines of the mandate, we're fine. Do you have? Um, well, the problem comes in when the city sponsors anything, then they become potentially liable in case somebody gets the virus. And so you have to um, take the general precautions to prevent people from contacting the disease. As long as you are following the governor's guidelines, you should be okay. The city is protected by two principles. Number one is the Nebraska Municipal Tort Claim Act. And the second one is the assumption of risk. The first one says that the city is not normally liable for any action for injuries or catching the disease so long as they take reasonable uh, efforts to protect the public. And those reasonable efforts would be to the five foot, six foot distancing, the, uh, all of the other things that the governor recommends. So if you follow the governor's recommendation, you're protecting yourself from lawsuits. Uh, the same is true for fireworks or anything else. And the second thing is that anyone that participates in these actions under the Nebraska principle of assumption of risk usually waives any right that they might have against the city of Crofton. So to answer your question, as long as you follow the guidelines set forth by the governor as far as safe distancing, disinfecting hands, and stuff like that should be okay. The Nebraska League of Municipalities has recommended that the city pass a resolution uh, setting forth that the various ball committees can conduct ball operations on city parks and facilities so long as whoever participates in those activities signs a waiver of liability. That's just an extra protection to prevent those people from suing the city of Crofton. The city has liability insurance, and I suspect that most of these documents that have been prepared have been prepared at the request of the insurance company for the uh, League of Rights Municipalities, but nonetheless, they're a good idea. So I recommend the city adopt this resolution to allow participation of anybody 
in sports, baseball, softball sports on the city recreation grounds so long as they sign a waiver, and I prepared a waiver for people to sign too. There's some question about how this waiver is going to be handled. Uh, it's usually not a question about your own people. Your own people are going to sign the waiver, but if you have kids from Bloomfield or Walsall or someplace else come over here and play a game in Crofton, you, uh, it's recommended that you send these waivers to the coach of the other team and that the coach of the other team is required, is responsible to get his team members to sign the waiver and send it back to the city of Crofton clerk prior to the game. And if they don't have the waivers on file, then they can't play. Now, one exception, some towns are saying that if they bring the waivers with them and present it to the to city clerk or some city personnel at the time of the game, that's fine. But they are unanimous in saying that if they don't sign the waivers, they shouldn't play on the city facility because it makes the city liable. So would that would that be the same thing for their running then? That would be a sport? The same principle applied to the running thing. So if get all, everybody to sign a waiver. Would that fit in with what you want to do, guys? Usually we do have to sign waivers when we do the, the run itself. Um, we can just add our waiver to yours? The only uh, worry I have is that usually people sign up the day of or the night of um, and just trying to spread them out so we're not all around. Because the, the two main issues of social distancing for a fun run is registration, and everybody's huddled around that area waiting for it to start, and then the finish. But we're planning on doing awards for the finish so that way people can disperse and go on um, and not have to worry about them all and congregate at that point. So that would be, that's where it comes with, uh, if we do that part, we could possibly do it, I'm not sure how that would look. Um, or we could do that, we're going to put glow sticks in the park. You can follow paths around the parks or whatever um, on your own type of thing just to kind of promote it but not actually officially do something too. I don't know. That's why we kind of have. But if you're going to have to sign waivers, we can have waivers for the city. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That'll work. And that would work for base or softball, baseball. I don't know if we. Creighton just did that, so they had they had their waiver on. They had the same meeting this morning and did that. So. Yeah, Wendy was that. Wendy's not in town, did she? Okay. Um, she was asking about that for softball, yeah, baseball. They have an example of their whole waiver on so we can click on the link and look at it. So, you know, and and keep in mind that if we got to talk about those bathrooms and stuff because if they're going to be open, they have to be sanitized every two hours. So I don't know what we're going to do with that, okay? Did you need so the rules for the restrooms um, must be cleaned and disinfected regularly, at least every two hours while players and fans are present. Markings should be placed on the ground to ensure individuals waiting to use the restroom are spaced to six foot apart. Uh, softball and baseball, uh, softball, yeah, uh, for adults and youth. Uh, same guidelines as practices. Uh, dugouts and benches are permitted during the games only. Uh, bleachers are located between the dugout and the home plate also should be used to spread out players. Um, I think, do I need to read all this? No, you don't need to read all those, but those should be uh, put on a big poster and, and post it all and around. And post and we can get those posted and so that everybody knows the rules. If you're a coach or if you're a head of a department or if you're, you know, be sure you know them, come in, talk to us, get copies, whatever. Okay? Yeah. The only question I have is okay, we, so we send that to, let's just say, Drayton, and they come here to play. Um, we send them over there, they send 12 back, they come up with 13 or 14 girls. Um, is it possible when they come that we just have them sign it there? That way we know if everybody's covered. You know what I'm saying? You, yeah, you, you can do that as long as everybody signs it and they're turned into the city 
That's the only issue is that we have to turn it into the city before they can play. Right. Call me, I'll come and get them. <laughs> I mean, I, I understand that's going to be something, but we'll work something out. I'll work yeah. with you. Okay. Yeah. You have have Same with you guys. Wouldn't you have to have okay. the Guardian sign those? What? Wouldn't you have to have the Guardian sign those, though, too? Or can the kids sign them? I'm going to guess well, the parents. If the kids are under 17, then the parents have to sign. If the kids are over 17, they can sign themselves. And so, if the parents come with the kids, the parents can sign. If the kid comes by itself, that's going to be a problem. I think the only thing I could, you know, what, what would be smart, would, if these kids are going to play even one game, if they think they might come to Crofton, but they're not going to go to the rest of them, that they just sign them and get them here ahead of time and they're on file. Right. <laughs> it's no different than like signing up and paying their dues to they have to have it done. Right? Yeah. So what, what do we need for well, someone needs to make, pass a, a motion to adopt the COVID-19 resolution for uh, softball and baseball programs in Crawford. And I, I guess I should say this before we step ahead. Does anybody um, want to change anything about the swimming pool or the swimming pool stay closed, Council? I think we need to keep the pool here myself. So nobody wants to make a motion of anything different there? Okay. Then, then this applies to all sports. Anything, if you're going to have an activity, get the kids, get the coaches, they have to sign it also. Everybody. Yeah, anybody. Everybody part, involved has anybody to sign this waiver. And I made this up just for baseball and softball, but I'll modify it for any city sponsored sports. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody, yeah. That's, anybody that's in the dugout that's participating. Anybody that's on the field. Umpires. Um, everybody. Extra parents coaching. Extra. Anybody. Scorekeepers. Anybody. 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 So our motion yeah. is to yeah. our motion is to accept the resolution is to pass the resolution. Yes. Yeah. I would accept the pass the resolution. To it's to pass the resolution for okay. any participation on for city recreation grounds as long as the participants sign a waiver of liability. Okay. So moved. Don moves. Second. Second. Arlene was ahead of you, Larry. Okay, Arlene? Yes. Isla? Yes. Larry? Yes. And Don? Yes. Okay, so we're moving backwards now. Number one in that list we already talked about, that's Brian Paulson with the training thing. Um, I just want to point out that there's a, that when we passed the handbook, that we passed a new thing about sick days and, and vacation days. And remember that some of the people on staff already had vacation days and so forth, and we need to bring those two together. So the handbook reads that um, that they that they get new sick and vacation days allotted on their um, anniversary of their hire. Well, their hire was already done. So I think we need to perhaps take the days that they had. Um, accumulate it and then take the date of the handbook and make that their anniversary date for everybody that was on staff at that time. So everybody had a different date that they started? Not the ones that were here when we passed this, but the, when, but the ones that come on after the handbook would be the day they're hired. Okay? If, if, does everybody do, I think if we just agree with that interpretation, we can move forward. Okay. Um, the possible change of office hours, I don't know if we need to talk about that. If anybody's got any suggestions right now, Lisa's working half a day. Um, and um, so just want you to be aware that some changes might have to be made. Are we getting another person? We're advertising. We're advertising. You're, you're advertising now? Yeah. Um, 
the mowing of big, any questions there? If, if we've got a sign at the door that says we're closed on Friday. Most of the time we're both here on Friday. But, you know, but if we're going to set some hours, then we need to change that sign. So right now we're trying to just follow what's on the sign. So just heads up that we'll see how that happens. Um, the vacate, I said vacate lots, but it means vacant lots. Sorry about that. Um, Mr. Shoemaker is, has done some of these forever, and he's added one down there, that, the one that, um, um, what's his name? Frank Marsh owns down by the ball field. He'll be doing that one also. Um, I've talked with Dennis and I said, you know, he said he doesn't want to come to town every time one of them's ready. So he wanted to know if he could come in and do them all at the same time, which is fine. I said, but he should make a deal with the landowners that they keep the weeds and the dandelions down around the edges and stuff. That's what about the houses that, that have no residents at this time? And they let it grow up to at least about uh, Well, that's up to Mike Chase to take care of, get that started. And he's working with the um, planning and zoning and also with, we're looking for some people to get some names and Jonathan's working on that. So, um, the, uh, we need a motion in order to complete this transition. We need a motion and a, 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 a vote um, to remove uh, Kathy Noors as a signatory on all bank accounts. Um, we did one that added Lisa, but the bank accounts said that they needed, or the bank said they need one to remove the signatories as well. So um, I guess the motion would be to remove uh, the prior clerk Kathy Noors signatory just as it's there on all bank accounts including uh, at Cedar Security and at the Farmers Merchant State Bank. So moved. Move Don moves. Second. I'll second it. Larry seconds. Okay. Um, Isla? Yes. Don? Yes. Larry? Yes. And Arlie? Yes. Uh, surface water control, again, this is informative as much as anything. There's a lot of uh, places where water comes off the buildings and forms its own little triplets and goes next door into somebody else's yard. So um, Mike and I and, um, took a walk down through several blocks and um, um, going to take this block by block and kind of lay out what needs to be finished and we'll come back with you, say this, you know, and then we'll get letters out to the inhabitants and so forth. The guys are going to do some dirt work if they can with the blades and Andrew, send that water where it needs to be. It is the responsibility of the person that owns the Yes, it is. That's why we're looking into it. Yeah. So, um, the guys also asked me to ask our street engineer, our street superintendent, um, Steve Parr, to come out and take a look at those two bad intersections on the street going down into the ballpark. Um, there's maybe some major work. They've been on our one and six plan for years and nothing ever, they, nothing we do seems to help them. So um, they said, you know, they could use some advice here. So he pretty much works for nothing. So he'll come out and we'll get some advice. Um, now the big one, the last two there, kind of put them together, the equipment replace and repair kind of thing. Guess what? <laughs> uh, the tractor um, with the belly mower is um, pretty much done. Well, I went over to Cadence today, talked to your hand, talked to Keith Gun uh, Gunther. At this point right now, we got like $2,244. I'm fixing that mower. They're kind of in the dark what's wrong with it until they split it open. He gave me suggestions that it could be a seal, could be bearings. Uh, I asked him how much it would cost just to split it and look and make it sure it's shot. I asked him if the tractor was shot and he said no. He said the tractor has got some repairs to do on it, but it's not, it's not for the bone yard right now. He said he would open it up for $500 and then give us a, a, a 
a more accurate cause was from the board. And I said I'd bring it to the board, see if you guys would want to table it for another month. They said that they had a mower that we could rent. And I also talked to Mr. Stephan, and he said he had a mower that we could probably use for nothing if we needed one. Okay, we've asked for some bids from several places. And um, that's interesting because we asked what it would cost over there, uh, and we wondered why they weren't um, telling us, so they've apparently told you that the, the five, the two, they, they already charged us more than that to fix it well, the first time. That's so, cheap that he had on the computer, yeah. 2200 That's what it was until this last breakdown, and he says, we don't know what it is until we open it up. I said, what is it going to cost to split it and look? He said, $500. I said, I'm well, that's to... just to look, right? Right, just yeah. to look. Okay, but and we're working on that, Larry. We really are. But what I'm saying is that that tractor has what's the, what, how many hours? Twenty five hundred hours on it, which is, you know, we talked about replacing that last year, and then we put the mower on it. We didn't do it. All I'm saying is that we are in the process of getting bids and stuff. We've asked Jerry for a bid. We've asked, I don't know, five or six areas now. We're also looking at leases. So yes, they're going to loan us stuff. They're going to look after us, but we're going to have to take care of this because we mow a lot about area. We also need to look at the fact that that tractor is a tractor. It's not a mower. And if we need, if we can use the front end um, loader we need and we get the grapple hooks to go with it that's a double duty the tractor we use now with the grapple hooks to load trees is again on its last leg remember we've talked about upgrading and getting equipment that is usable we want to do as little as we can with repair over the years so um, everything's welcome uh, no decisions tonight, just making everybody aware this is another one of those things that we need to get together probably and talk about finances. Everything's coming at once. You mentioned the crop work. Is that something we could add to our lease on our skid loader? Like, um, we're, and we're looking at leasing a mower, to, or the tractor too. That's what I went over and talked with. I always forget his name. What's his name? Josh. Josh. I spent some time with him and some time with Keith also. And, um, you know, if we could, um, the, it turns out that the skid loader, we get a new one every year. And it's always under warning. It's basically cost us the lease and that's it. But the leases that we've seen coming in is more of a lease to own rather than a lease to renew. So I really need to see if they've got some better options than that because if you're going to lease it for five years and then buy it, you're right back to your having to buy where we were, you know. But the fact of the matter is, if you're going to go new, you've got a $30,000 deal there. So, so we also they're not cheap. We also got to know that we're not planning with money right now. Well, we got right now money. or any other time. But, but, exactly. Yeah. But I mean, that's what, but but that's one of the costs of working. Yeah, Jared. What, what can you okay. Tell? First thing you said, twenty five hundred dollars on that tractor. Twenty five hundred dollars on a diesel tractor is good broke in. Period. Okay. I've been Let's have this conversation. I've been at this for sixty two years. Now, when you say that that tractor should be replaced because it's got twenty, I didn't say it should be replaced. No, I said we're looking at into renewing it. it because we don't want repairs. I've got a tractor in here right now from another dealership, it's a 55 horse tractor that was not taken care of from the day it came out of the factory. And the hydro was out of that unit, we think. We send it away and they're checking it. And my repair bill on that, I pretty well got it figured out as to what it's gonna be. I know ahead of time, the tractor split that's sitting there and the thing's sent away. This little tractor you got there, you got a So what are you telling us, that you can repair it back easier? What? You can repair it cheaper than that? Or we haven't even got a bed. I, I know, and we don't know for sure what's wrong with it. And when they say to open it up for $500, that does make sense. The hydro unit in that tractor is the most expensive thing in and the And that's part of what's gone. Yeah. And that can be repaired for 
depending upon where you go. You might spend $6,000 one place, $4,000 in another place, and $3,000 in another place. If you're going to a franchise dealer, you're going to get it. You're going to get it just like when you were looking for a more. Well, we're can, talking six and seven thousand dollars. Can we, Jerry? I don't want to be nasty here, but can we have this conversation in the office and you give us your bid and what you can offer us? I don't have a bid because I do not have the specifications as to what you really want. What the okay. horsepower? If you're looking at a tractor that's 35, 40 horses, you're going to. Put I thought the guys told you we wanted a third, at least a 35. With a belly more underneath. It. I called out there this morning and left a message with one of the boys. You talked to Ryan? Huh? All the specifications. All the specifications. I talked to one of the... I talked to Ryan. Okay. 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 But here's no, the thing. Just listen. No, you listen, Jerry. Not everybody here wants to hear this about this. Come to the office and sit down and talk with us. We'll, we'll talk we with you. I'm asking you for a bid as to what you want the specifications. We don't and we're that. asking you, and they called you and, and left it out there. Go go work on it and bring yes. it. And Call us tomorrow. Get, when did we get that? This, this morning. morning. Yes. Now you talk about people coming here and if they want to talk to you about something, you should come to them a couple days ahead of time so you know what to talk about. Well, why don't you do the same thing to me? <clears throat> come on, I want an answer. We called everybody today because we didn't... I have... think some other people were notified longer than today. No, they weren't, and I'm not going to argue with you. You're out of order. This is over. No, I'm not out of order. I'm asking I want to, I would like an, um, a <clears throat> motion for adjournment, please. We got to pay the... Okay, I want a motion to pay the bills. I'll make a motion to pay the June 1st bills. Motion by Larry for bills. Second. I'll second. Second by Arlene. Don. Yes. Larry. Yes. Arlene. Yeah. And I. Yeah. I think that completes the. Um, everybody see anything else on the agenda? Next meeting will be July 6th, except we might call one plant? for finances. The sewer plant. Oh, uh, the sewer plant. Thank you. The sewer plant. I got a call today. Um, you talked about last minute. Um, we think we've got this all laid out in the, in the last day. We get calls from everybody and their dog. So this is um, the easiest thing on our side either. Um, the sewer plant, as you all know, I'm going to go through this because it's going to be part of that next financial meeting. Okay? There's a packet in there. Uh, the... the um, We've been getting the runaround from USDA for a little over a year, as you all know. First they want a lagoon, then they don't want a lagoon, and then they want the, um, the clarifiers to be changed, and then they don't want them to be changed. And the big thing is you can't shut it down while you're working on it, and blah, blah, blah. So, USDA, I talked with our Ryan, who is our engineer, he's been very good, he's been keeping in touch with us as much as he possibly can. Um, around the DEE and the USDA. He said, if you go with the, if the WEWAC, that group of people that get together and decide who you're gonna, who's your best um, financer. They've decided a long time ago it was USDA and then they've changed their mind about three times and up the price. I have not been happy with them, and I understand that they're probably okay, but Ryan called and said, you know what, if you get, if, if you can just get some other financing, if we don't have to go through them, he said, right now they're at a place, well there's a letter in there, that they're going to, that if he would have to up his engineering fees to do what they want to do, again, um, so the Brad Slaughter, there's a letter from him. I would like you all to take that and read it. Um, and along with what Mr. Um, Brian has to say, Brad Slaughter has offered to help with financing through this Piper Sandler. They, Brad worked for Emeritus when they did Sharon Street. I worked with him often, all the time I was doing assessments. He's a gentleman, he's very helpful. He explains everything, he'll come to your meetings, whatever. Um, 
he quit emeritus over a disagreement on something that was a moral question for him about interest rates or something, and he and some other guys have gone to another company. So, anyway, there is a, a, a thing there with a 20-year loan. Um, he figures that we can save a considerable amount of money and they can start the project. And we need to get it moving again, just like the swimming pool, we need to get it going. Um, Yes, it's a, again, it's got to cost some money, but remember in last year's budget, I, uh, there again, we put some money back here to get this going. So we need to have a finance meeting where we can sit down with all the available funds, show where they're coming from, where they're going, and how we're going to do this. Is it going to be this month? Yes, it needs to be as soon as possible. Can, some, can everybody meet next week? On Monday? Monday is school board meeting night. If anybody, if anybody has an objection to that, we can meet Monday if you want a school board meeting. Well, I just need to know what night. Yeah, but I mean, I'm just saying this. How about the rest of you? I don't like Monday. <coughs> <All right. laughs> but it, this is on Monday. Um, so how about what? What is the date of Monday? Well, the seventh. Seventh. Or no, no eight. Monday, eight. 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 And we have some things to the eight. No, we have our payroll due eight, and then we have to finish up those QuickBooks changeovers. Let's do Thursday of next week. Would that work for everybody? The 11th. Mm -hmm. Okay. 6 30 ish. Okay. And I'll try, I'll try to get different paperwork out to you so you can you know, keep looking at what's where. Are we going to have that? Is this the only thing we're going to talk about on that uh, June 11th? It's like finances. The north, north side too? North yep. Side? Okay. Yep. We've got the mower, we've got the, five, the north side, we've got the swimming pool, and we've got the sewer. Those are big items. Is there anything else in there? I think that's what we've got. Okay, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Motion by Larry to adjourn, or by Don to adjourn. Oh, second. Second by Larry. I am. Yes. Arlene, Larry, yes. Don. Thank you.